Richard Sammers, I'm the visual effects supervisor for Ridley Scott's Robin Hood film. Uh, we created over 570 shots for the film, which uh, mainly consisted of crowd work, battle enhancements, uh, including generation of arrows, uh, digital environments. The biggest part of our work was creating the French Armada uh, and the battle that, uh, that follows. So the team here consisted of uh, digital effects supervisor Jessica Norman and CG supervisor Max Wood and we together supervised a team of over 150 digital artists. One of the main challenges we had on the project was the creation of the French Armada that uh, invades the south coast of England and the, uh, the battle with the English army that uh, follows afterwards. We had to do quite a bit of work to create uh, an environment that surrounded the beach location that we shot at in South Wales, but um, there were no cliffs there, so that was one of our main environment uh, processes that we had to go through was to create uh, cliffs that surrounded the location. Uh, we also had to create the, the French Armada which consisted of uh, 200 digital boats. Um, the production were able to provide uh, eight practical boats, four landing craft and four rowboats and uh, we used our digital boats to augment that considerably and obviously wider shots and uh, enhance slightly in, uh, in some of the tighter shots. Uh, release shooting style tended to be centered around sort of using lots of cameras. We had kind of up to 10 cameras running on any, any one setup, um, and including an aerial unit uh, filming from a helicopter. So uh, the, 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 the days when we had up to sort of 500 extras um, performing on, on the beach along with all the boats, it seemed like it would work pretty well for a lot of shots, but with that many cameras filming it, uh, it often spread them very thin and uh, we were having to do quite a lot of crowd additions. I'm Max Wood, I was CG supervisor on Robin Hood. One of the big challenges of shooting on the beach in Wales was the fact that uh, it was a mile long and half a mile deep. Um, we had to survey the whole area and um, we tried to do this with LiDAR but we could only get a small section due to the fact that the tide would come in so quickly. So we LiDAR'd the section around the sand dunes and roughly about 20 to 30 feet into the beach as well. We then used survey data from a total station to get tracking points all the way along the beach, which we then made into a model to cover the whole beach all the way down to the waterline. MPC has its own motion capture library, which we used extensively through the, sh through the show, but we also needed to do a two-day capture to get any actions we didn't already have. These were specific to the show, for example, uh, rowing from a landing craft um, or, and from a rowboat. We actually had to build a mock-up of the landing craft to use in the motion capture studio so that we could get exact depths of rowing plus the actual pivot points for where the guys were sat. Um, we also needed to capture guys jumping out of the landing craft, so we built the end of the landing craft, which the guys would run along and jump off onto the crash mats to act as the water. Um, then we also got a horse into the motion capture studio, which they built a specific suit for, and then it um, ran along the ramp, jumped over, and we captured that as well. We had some shots turned over early to use as key development shots and one in particular was very useful for ascertaining the design of the cliff uh, environment that surrounded the beach. Um, we conceptualised some, some early ideas in with some pretty much just basic Photoshop stills, uh, presented those to Ridley to get an idea of what he liked and we took that uh, essential design as a starting point and built some 3D geometry uh, based around the the actual real location. We used the LiDAR scan of the beach and um, further survey data that we created to get an accurate model of the actual beach location. From there we presented some uh, different uh, angles of the beach to really to get an idea of how high the cliffs were and where the sort of undulations would be and, and various other story points actually that were necessary like access to the beach because obviously you've got a thousands of French troops landing on a beach where uh, surrounded by cliffs, they need, a, they need a way to get out of there basically and also for the English uh, army to be able to get down to the beach. So the shot that we see here is basically made up of an armada of about 200 boats. Um, we don't see all of them here but um, as it's sort of quite early on in the beach landing, we really wanted to uh, use this shot to sort of ascertain the, the sort of the numbers. Um, we've got the sort of first wave of landing craft and rowboats that have got to the, the shoreline and I think we have around sort of between 1,500 and 1,700 French soldiers that have disembarked from the boats down there on the beach. For all of the boats and the disembarking soldiers and horses, uh, we needed to create water interactions for all of their, their motions. So uh, the effects department set about creating a sort of a library of um, flow line simulated water splashes um, that we were able to essentially stick to any of our Alice crowd agents. So as soon as they 
um, got out of a landing craft and came in contact with water, it would generate a splash. And it would just call up a library of different varied splash elements that, uh, that would basically just get generated um, or rendered at render time um, in the right places. We had about 200 shots which uh, featured digital arrows and uh, for the most part we were able to handle these with our compositing team, um, mostly using Shake and some of those in, in Nuke. The animation requirements for an arrow were reasonably simple and quite specific and uh, one of my compositing leads wrote a really great Shake macro that allowed the rest of the compositing team to you know, pick up um, an arrow shot pretty quickly and, and, and get the basics of the animation working really well. What it allowed uh, the artist to do was purely to place an, or, or track the end position of an arrow and give a timing of where it needed to hit and the actual macro would actually work out the timings and trajectory to get the arrow into that position at the right time. Um, conversely we could do the same thing going the other way, we could specify where an arrow was being fired from and uh, it would create the, the correct trajectory uh, and an impact uh, necessary. There are also additional controls for oscillating the arrow on impact depending on what type of surface it would hit. So if it landed in sand it would generally have very little oscillation. If it went into a shield it would wobble around a bit. So all of those factors could be incorporated into uh, into this macro that we wrote. During the Sailing to London sequence we got some B footage from Ridley Scott's previous film White Squall and we had to replace the very modern looking boat with our medieval wooden boat. We matched with the plates, animated our boat over the top of the original boat, and had to paint out certain bits of the original boat. We then had to do cloth sims for the sail, add in digi doubles, um, add in um, some CG horses, and um, a few water effects to really blend it back into the plate. I declare him an outlaw! 